this is a demo of NSX Advanced Threat Prevention. Let me quickly set the stage and let's also learn how attackers commonly deploy ransomware. And here we see our customer's topology that we will be using throughout the demo. And let's look at things from the attacker's perspective. In order to gain initial access into an environment, attackers often target employees. And in this case, we will see that through phishing, a backdoor is installed on the employee's VDI desktop, giving the attacker a foothold. Attackers then try to move laterally to gain access to, for instance, a database server, which holds the data that they're after, after which they will exfiltrate critical data out. And finally, as we've seen with a lot of recent ransomware incidents, attackers drop and execute ransomware in the environment, in this case, on the database server, which causes critical data to become encrypted, after which they will then demand payout. Now let me switch over to NSX to look at the same attack from the perspective of the defender. At the initial state of our investigation, we know that we had a ransomware incident on our production database server that caused files to be encrypted. So we start off our investigation by looking at the malware prevention events within NSX. And here we can see that we've detected two different types of malware. We've detected Cobalt Strike, and we've detected the dark side ransomware. The ransomware detection is the one of interest to us right now, so let's open this up. And from this event, we can see that the production database server with the IP address of 10.2.1.34 downloaded the malware from the VDI desktop with the IP address 10.1.1.100. Directly from this event, we can click on the analysis report, which opens up a detailed analysis about the malware. And here we can see that this malware has been identified as DarkSide ransomware, and we can learn more about its capabilities. Through dynamic analysis and detonating this file in our sandbox, we've learned, for example, that this malware ex exhibits behavior typical for ransomware and also has some evasive properties. It's trying to evade detection by traditional sandboxing solutions. Now that we've learned what caused files on the database server to be encrypted, we need to determine how the attacker was able to gain access to that server and get it to download the ransomware executable. Obviously, the database server isn't directly accessible from the outside, so let's figure out what happened. To figure out if there's any suspicious network activity related to our database workload, we go to the suspicious traffic view. The information we see here comes from NTA, or Network Traffic Analysis. We establish a baseline of traffic for each workload, and then look for deviations from that baseline and apply threat-centric models to determine which of these deviations are relevant from a security perspective. We have a number of different detectors across several tactics and techniques, including detectors for exfiltration through DNS tunneling, beaconing activity, scanning, or credential access attempts. In our case, we are interested in the production database workload, so let's go ahead and create a filter based on that VM. Let's also look at the last month, and now we see a suspicious connection to a port of the database workload coming from a VDI desktop. Normally in our baseline, we only see traffic on port 8080 to this workload. However, we've identified traffic on port 3389, which is an anomaly for this workload. Now this is the default port for RDP, and according to the VMware Threat Intelligence Report, more than 75% of lateral movement happens via RDP. So this is definitely suspicious. We can learn more about the traffic between these workloads by clicking this link, which takes us to the Discover and Take Action page. Here we can see that the traffic between the VDI desktop and the production database server is unprotected, which means that this has not been segmented. With a proper allowless segmentation policy, we can make lateral movement a lot more difficult by blocking communication that should not be allowed between workloads. You can also see other contexts about this workload, like running processes or logged in users. And in this case, we can also see from this view that we have detected suspicious network activity on this VM. So far, we have learned that the dark side ransomware caused files on the database server to become encrypted, and that there was some suspect lateral movement to the database server from a VDI desktop. That, however, doesn't tell the whole story. With NDR, or Network Detection Response, we can correlate individual events from malware prevention, NTA, and IDPS into intrusion campaigns, which provide SOC analysts with the full story behind an intrusion and map every event to the MITRE ATT&CK framework. 
The campaigns view provides a high-level overview of correlated intrusion campaigns that we've observed within the environment, and from here we can open up the NDR view. Here you see that NDR has automatically correlated one intrusion campaign, and you can also see that this campaign is in the exfiltration stage of the MITRE attack framework, meaning that exfiltration of data was observed. Now we can click on this campaign to see the details, and here we see that a number of different threats were detected through sandboxing, IDPS, or NTA, and we can also see that two workloads were involved, and we've correlated the different detection events to the MITRE attack framework. Now let's have a look at the blueprint of the intrusion campaign, and let me rearrange this visualization a bit to match our network topology. Here we have our attacker on the outside, and we have our VDI desktop, let me put it on the left, and our database server putting it on the right here. First thing we saw was that the VDI desktop downloaded a malicious file from the attacker. This was detected through malware detection and sandboxing. Then our IDS and IPS detected that the Cobalt Strike Toolkit initiated the command and control session with the attacker. NTA then detected a network traffic anomaly we looked at earlier, in which the attacker used credentials they've obtained from the VDI desktop to open an RDP session with the database workload in order to move laterally. After that, we saw exfiltration, and finally, we observed that malware was dropped on the database server from the VDI desktop. And this was the transfer of the dark side transmitter, which we looked at earlier. This gives us the complete overview of the intrusion campaign as we are correlating all the different events from different detectors. All of this without needing to deploy any sensors in the network, without needing any hairpinning, without spans or tabs, and independent of network connectivity. Now, let's open up the timeline view for a more detailed look at the different stages of this attack. And let me organize this by start time. We saw that a malicious file was downloaded on our VDI desktop via a Word document, and this triggered the download of the Cobalt Strike Toolkit, which is a red team tool that is also commonly used by malicious actors. A few minutes after that, we saw that the Cobalt Strike command and control session was established from the VDI desktop to the attacker's machine, and this gives the attacker command and control over the compromised desktop. And as you can see, this has been detected by means of an IDPS signature. Two hours later, we detected a deviation from the baseline of our normal network traffic coming into the database server, and specifically we saw communication over an unusual port, which was the attacker leveraging RDP in order to pivot the attack. Six hours after that, we observed the attacker was exfiltrating data from the database. In this specific attack, our IDP has used a signature to detect the use of the DNSCAT tool on the network. Now, DNSCAT is a known tool that we can detect using signatures. However, we can also detect unknown or more evasive exfiltration methods based on network traffic anomalies rather than signatures. Finally, three hours after I had exfiltrated key data, the attacker dropped and executed the dark side transfer on the database, which caused data to become encrypted. So with this, we have completed our analysis and we've learned that this was not just the case of ransomware being executed on the database server, but we've also learned that the attacker gained initial access via a VDI desktop and that they were able to move laterally due to lack of segmentation and were able to exfiltrate data out of the database. Now we want to make sure that this doesn't happen again. And in order to do that, we can go through our IDPS and malware prevention policy. Currently, as you can see, our malware prevention and IDPS policies on the distributed firewall have been deployed in detect-only mode. In order to prevent the download of malware, exploitation of services, or command and control activity, we can change this to detect and prevent mode. Another key thing to keep in mind is that because our malware prevention feature on the distributed firewall leverages guest introspection, we can block a file and prevent it from being written to disk even if it came in over an encrypted network connection and never pass through the perimeter. 